What's good, everybody? Part two of the conversation of Trap Lord Ross and Van Lathan. And just to catch you guys up, if you haven't seen, seen the last video, we are picking up with King David speaking to Trap Lord Ross, holding him accountable for all the murders in Chicago um, because of a documentary. Kind of strange to me, but uh, let's go. And remember, you can say whatever you want over here. The only rules are talk like you got some sense and be nice. All praise to the almighty algorithm. Like, share, subscribe. Let's get it. That's kind of like trying to let it that hell. So, and then they come with these big documentaries. Oh, this person, the number one killer. Oh, the number one sniper. And then it'd be like, come on, man, be quiet. Like, you know, we do be trying to bring some type of peace with it, even though we're a long, long way from it. But it's like the instigating, it just get on my nerves and it get on a lot of people's nerves. And it's like, we not telling you, don't put your work out. No, put your work out. We understand that. But when you do put in your work out, you're thinking about the other people. And that's like my whole point. I don't have no beef with them. I don't hate them. I don't feel like that. I just hate when I just be seeing these wars and all these bodies. And in Chicago right now, it's one. Females are dying like they die, man. I can tell you, look on, on, on Instagram or Facebook, and I'm seeing women. And, and it's sad. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, is he has he ever filmed uh Van Lathan? Has Van Lathan or has uh Chicago King Dave ever like had conversations with people in the community that are doing that and delving into why they're doing that and telling them that that's detrimental to the community, that it's promoting genocide, that it's destructive to the community? It seems like um. That, that, that again, you know, it's kind of like I'm a broken record with a lot of this because it seems like this is acceptable behavior that we just don't want nobody else to talk about. So watch what I do. Just don't say nothing about it. I, I, all, all of that is fuel to the fight. So it's like, come on, man, we don't need all that right now. What time would you want to respond? And I'm cool. So, I mean, Dave, listen, I, I respect where you're coming from on, on several of your points. And I think that, uh, you know, I understand why you feel this way, but I think my perspective is just slightly different. And I, I, I do disagree with a lot of what you just said. I think the first first thing that I got, I got to say I disagree on is, you know, the idea that people are sliding behind my video, I, I just disagree with that. And the reason I disagree with that is because, one, people don't slide about something they heard on the internet. Like, the people don't slide about a YouTube documentary. They slide about one of their homies got killed, one of their friends got murdered in cold blood. You know, how do you explain all the sliding that went on last week before my video came out? You know, all the different things that have been going on in Chicago. You can't really take that stretch and blame it on me and say people are sliding about my video. Like, I don't, I'm not exposing information that's not already out there. Like, this is all stuff that was on King Von's Twitter, in King Von's songs. I think the idea that you're going to try and pin violence on me it's a bit of a stretch, and I know this is what they do to, this is what a lot of people have done to DJ academics as far as like, you know, the war in Chirac being responsible for the violence, but if you just look at the chain of events, like the violence has already occurred before I turned up and started looking into it, like I wouldn't even, I, I wouldn't even bother Googling somebody's name if they weren't already implicated in these situations, right? So it's really a case of like, the violence was already going on, I'm just here reporting on it, and I think any any attempt to kind of blame me or even academics, but let this let's stick with me, like to say that people are sliding about my video, I think that's just like it's it's a really bad faith way of trying to like avoid responsibility. Because the people that are really responsible for, for the sliding or the violence, you know, at the basic level, it's the individuals involved that are picking up a gun and choosing to cause violence. But then at another level, fine, if you want to make the, the, the next distinction, it's the city, it's the, the mayors, the politicians that have allowed these areas to get so bad so dangerous where there's no opportunities that people are kind of forced into these you know gang situations where they need to use a gang for protection i think those people the politicians and just the lack of guidance in these areas yeah y'all ain't got a walmart no more they ain't got a walmart in uh chicago no more no more walmart walmart said nope we gotta go y'all can keep all this you know what i mean it's you know what i mean uh, all this robbing and stealing and violence. And here's the thing about the Walmart situation. It wasn't just the robbing and stealing. Because, you know, a big corporation like Walmart, I mean, these guys are insured. You know what I mean? Um, so there's a, there's theft. I mean, it's not like white people don't steal. It's not like white people don't, 
take things? Of course they do. One of the differences with, with Walmart and Chicago were all of the violent incidences. Look this up. That had a big part to play in why Walmart got up out of here. You know what I mean? Because if there's if, if, you, if you're if you're Walmart, I mean, think about this right now. Think about wherever you are right now. If there's a I don't go to Walmart personally, but if there is a Walmart in your area, you you consciously decide which store you're going to go to and you know which stores to stay away from. You know, what I mean, so Chicago was having a problem with the violence in a lot of the Walmarts. OK. And your normal customer base who just wants to go and get their goods and services and leave, um, they're not going there. Because what y'all think is normal and okay, the rest of the world is like, eh, no, it's not. It's much more responsible for the violence than like me reporting on it. Because you, I, I wouldn't have any, if it hadn't already happened, I wouldn't have anything to report on, right? So it's kind of like, it, it, I just think it's a stretch to try and blame me. And I think that the people that need to, for my genuine... Now, he being nice. He being nice. It ain't a stretch to blame him. It's not a stretch to blame him. What it is is cowardice. All these political pundits, all these people that be, you know, these are the these are the people with the microphone with all the influence, right? Who who get to talk, right? Like Van Lathan, Van Lathan did a whole hip hop homicide show. How did, you know you had families and all that up there. I mean, did anybody talk about accountability? Did anybody talk about, did you guys really talk about the lives that a lot of these rappers were living? It doesn't justify, justify that anybody's death. Nobody wants to see somebody die, but come on. We all have people in our lives that have died that we care about, but they was moving reckless. All of us got people in our lives that we care about, that we love, but they not here now. And it ain't because they not here now by accident. You're not here now because you was moving in such a way that caused you to lose your life early. Did, did, did they discuss? I mean, because listen, I didn't, I didn't, I never didn't watch hip hop homicides. Okay. But the clips that I've seen of the show, I ain't heard nothing about accountability. And you know, the people that really need to take accountability is like the city, the police, the mayor. Because let's be real, like Chicago is, is a fucked up place. It's been in a it's been in a messed up situation for the past, you know, twenty years realistically, twenty years plus, where these things have allowed been allowed to happen. You know, people someone like Von, it's setting aside his music career, like we shouldn't have had a young guy that's in a situation where their father's getting killed when they're eleven, right? He's already starting off at a disadvantage with that situation, right? So it's kind of like the circumstances that exist that allow young people to fall in these dangerous situations. Uh, circumstances or IE shitty parenting. Let's stop playing. Let's let's stop acting like this is not shitty parenting. You seen all them kids in Chicago all in the street like that. Why are people in it? Why are there so all of them weren't kids, by the way. But why are there so many teenagers in the street like that? Because there's no accountability at the house. Now, there probably are, you know, some kids out there that come from good two-parent homes and they're just out there doing what the other kids are doing. But vastly, most of those kids, most of those kids, you already know, don't have no direction, don't have no instruction, are going home to empty houses, are going home, some of them in many cases, to empty refrigerators. You know what I mean? A lot of black children have to raise themselves. You don't keep talking past that. We don't keep playing like in a lot of these metropolitan cities, Kansas City, St. Louis, Chicago. A lot of these black children are not raising themselves. But you want to sit up here and talk about the kids or what the youth is doing wrong. You know, you know how old their parents are? Oh, about my age, your age, if you were your late 30s, early 40s, your age. This is why I'm very, very careful about talking about the children because I know who their parents are. And in most cases, I know how their parents are. I know what their parents is on. Call it what you want to. I know what your I, I used to work security in this club. I used to bounce this club years ago, man. Years ago before I had my son. Um, 
I would, I worked on a Wednesday. I would work Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. And my, you know, days would alternate or whatever. Every Wednesday was ladies night. Every Wednesday, ladies night. And there was a woman there, nice figure. And her claim to fame was, how many kids you think I got? I'm like, I don't know. You know what I mean? She had a six pack. So she's just, this, this sister worked out. I was like, I don't know how many kids you got. Six. Rattled off their, all their ages. Six kids. And you in the club every Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Shut the, get the fuck out my face talking about anything else that's going on. We know what the problems are. It's just impopular. It's not popular to talk about it because people, it's insensitive. Fuck all that. Black folks go from being the hardest, toughest, realest race of people to being the softest, weakest, most sensitive motherfuckers that you can't say nothing about. Get the fuck out my face with that. We know what it is. You know, whether it's gang violence or you've got situations in Chicago where people are doing robberies and that's going wrong and they're ending up in, you know, people are ending up hurt and killed as a result of that. But like, at the end of the day, I think it's just such a stretch to try and blame me and, and YouTube videos when really all we're trying to do is report on what's going on. Like, you've got a guy like King Kong who's making billboard charting songs not, about how he's killed seven Yo, I'd, I'd ask me like, yo, what is you scared of, G? Like, why ain't you talking like this to your homies? Why ain't you talking like this to the people in the community? Why ain't you talking like this to the people you know? My YouTube... All of it, I talk just like this to everybody I know. It ain't no character that I come up here and I be a different person. You know what I mean? It's the same person. So the stuff that's important to me, I'm having this out with my friends, with my family, right? Because before I come here and speak it and tell it to you, I've told my friends this. I've talked like this to my woman. I've talked like this to my daddy. I've talked like this to my kids, how come you ain't, well, let me ask, are you talking like this to the people around you, to the people you know who are being this way? Are you speaking to them about it or are you just, well, you know, he going to do what he going to do. Niggas, niggas hate accountability. People, and that's for really glorifying the violence. you got the guy that's literally committing the murders, rapping about it, getting paid. He's a millionaire. Listen, bro, like. I, I, I make a bit of money. I'm not a millionaire. I'm nowhere near a millionaire. Like, King Bomb was a millionaire wearing APs and diamond chains off the back of allegedly killing people and rapping about it, right? So, I don't think I glorify it. I think in my video, I'm, I'm actually very careful, very careful when it comes to saying, you know, you said you watched the whole video, so I'm sure you, you, you saw it, but there's a section in the video where I explain, look, let's take a step back before we get into this and look at why these circumstances were allowed to happen. You know, I talk about. I mean, if you have the argument that Trapler Ross is glorifying this in a documentary, how can you say he's glorifying this in a documentary, but King Von, Little Dirk, Chief Keef, and all the rest of these rappers aren't glorifying it? I mean, how how is this worse than that? Uh, King Von being born into a difficult situation, losing his father at a young age losing a lot of his friends at a young age. You know, he himself says that seeing his friend White White get killed in front of him turned him into a demon. And it's like, these are the situations, like this messed up environment in Chicago that's been allowed to happen by the city and the state and whoever else is responsible for things getting so bad. The city, the state, and the people in the city. The city and the state and the people, the parents, the community that allows it to happen. People act like crime and violence, like these things are just naturally occurring and you have nothing to do with it. We all know that that's bullshit, man. All right. You, there's a lot of complicity and it pretty much starts in the home, as cliche as that, as, as that sounds. But you heard how the mayor and them was talking about what was going on in Chicago. No accountability. No accountability whatsoever. And that, that's a large part of why things don't change there. And that's a large part of why things don't change in any of these cities because people be scared to be accountable. You know, those are the things that turn people into dick demons or fuck people up. I think to say that people like me that are reporting on it and just trying to give perspective about what's going on in these billboard charting songs, 
you know, the guy's going to turn on the radio and hear a guy talking about he's got seven bodies. I think we all have a right to know whether or not that's true, <laughs> what the stories are behind that. But I just, I, I really struggle to, to agree. Look, with Dave looking stupid. Suggesting that, like, I'm responsible for the violence. And I think if you, people that watch my video... Watch Dave it, looking dumb. I think you can see, I, I try and approach this topic with a responsible tone. I try and say, look, there are reasons why things are so fucked up in Chicago, especially if you watch my video on the murder of FBG Duck, where, you know, that, forget, set aside the whole serial killer for a minute. My video on the murder of FBG Duck, I say in that video for numerous times, look, you've got five people here that committed a heinous murder, but these are five people who grew up losing all of their best friends, and they were pushed into this situation where it was kill or be killed. So it's kind of like, I think there are people that glorify this kind of stuff. I think you've got channels like Hip Hop Daily, where you've got dudes that are basically just using a, a robot voice to, to just fucking, you know, make the easiest, cheapest, most sensational way of cashing in on these bodies. But I'm not one of those. I try and approach my topics very responsibly. I try and do the research the best I can possibly do. And, I, you know, I'll admit, my video had a couple of mistakes in it, a couple of wrong pictures that we got fixed. But that's facts, and I, I'm willing to admit that. But I, I don't think that... It's it's fair to say that like you could say that my video is responsible for violence. You know, the majority of my videos on gang conflicts, I'll usually end the video saying the violence has to stop. You know, if you ever see my, my project on the Jacksonville gang war, I end that video by saying this has to stop. We we gotta try and find a way of improving things in these areas. And I think that it's just it's just a stretch to necessarily say I'm responsible or I'm stoking it. Because if that's the case, then why was everybody sliding before I dropped my video or before I was making YouTube videos? This has been going on for decades, so that's my view, but you know, I, I'm interested in your your response. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in and throw one more question back to you, just like I did to Dave, real quick. Um, so people, the societal conditions that exist in Chicago and the culture that exists in parts of Chicago that kind of perpetuates the cyclical violence. Obviously, those things don't have anything to do with Trap Laura Ross or with any video that you might put up. We can all say that, right? That goes for any place. But do you see um, any merit to the idea that there might have been somebody somewhere, because the video already has a million views, and when I watched it, obviously, it's, you're good at what you do, it's incredibly well done, but when I watched it, I knew that this would be a big video. It's one, it'll probably get to five, maybe even seven, ten million views. Do you see the possibility that there might be somebody that goes, you know, you know what, I forgot about all of this, or I'm not, I, like, I, I haven't been really on this, or this hasn't been top of mind, or look at the amount of people, or when you see a picture of somebody that you love that might be exed out by the other side, that that puts a battery in your back. Do you see that as a possibility from your content? And it No. 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 I mean, if, if that's a... Okay, I guess that's possible like how they say anything's possible. You know what I mean? Because if that's possible, then you have to extend that conversation. You got to extend this idea that Van just said. That has to be extended to the rappers who rap about it. Right? Okay, then if, 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 if it's so detrimental for me to do this type of documentary because it could put a battery in a person's back, then what you think weed, alcohol, ecstasy, and King Von or Chief Keep uh, uh, it, it, on the stereo, what you think that does? I mean, and I'm for rappers saying whatever they want to say, doing, doing whatever they want to do as an artist musically. Um, so I don't think anybody should be censored, right? But if, 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 you, if, you're, if you want a director of a documentary or a person who created a documentary to be like, oh, okay, well, I got to be careful on this. Okay, then how come the rappers ain't got to be careful? So this is, this is what I'm saying. Have you had this conversation, Van, with the rappers? Huh? With the ones in the videos with the guns in the room. Everybody got guns in the room. It's a bunch of niggas in the room. Everybody got guns. You talking to them? If you do see it as a possibility of your content, what is the overarching value of your content that you feel like undercuts the notion 
that there's even a possibility that it can lend itself. So I don't have no money. It's informative. Right. That's the overarching value is that it's informative and he condensed everything down into like however many hours he went from, um, you know, explaining the gangs, the gang signs, this, the different sets and whatnot. He explained everything. So information and education is the overarching value. If you a dummy that watches a documentary and gets a battery put in your back, or if you're a dummy who puts on a song and then wants to go do what's in the song, nigga, that's on you. Should nobody make content or make art uh, um, based off of what the dumbest of society is going to do? To fuck? All right, so we should create everything with the with the idiots in mind. All right, so when you leave your house, everybody should just have helmets to put on, just in case you can't walk and you slip and fall. Dumb shit. Like straight up, I just don't believe that because if that's true, okay. then by the same notion, you got to tell the Chicago Tribune to just stop reporting complete media blackout on every murder that happens in Chicago. Because bear in mind, the majority of the names. Information in my video. It's clippings from the Chicago Tribune, Chicago Sun Times, original reporting on these situations going on. You know, you can't just suppress the facts. Like, if somebody gets killed, you can't just have a media blackout and say, nobody can ever talk about that this ever happened in case violence continues to happen. And we all know as a fact that if somebody gets killed in one of these conflicts, it's not that if people aren't sliding on the Chicago Sun Times, they're trying to kill the person that killed their loved one. Like, let's right. let's be real. Let's let's Stop. break this down. Like, people like. It, just is absurd to me that people are sliding about videos like, oh, they killed my cousin and I wasn't going to do shit. But then Trapwell Ross mentioned it in a video 12 right. years later and now it's time to slide. Like to me, that's just an absurd leak in logic when in reality you need people like me, Chicago sometimes, academics talking about these things. Because if we don't talk about the murders that are happening in these places, it's just going to get swept under the rug and no one's ever going to do anything. I think the city needs to acknowledge what's going on and do more. You know, seeing, seeing the mayor with Lil Durk after everything that he has said in music and that he has, you know, associated himself with, I think that does far more damage for the next generation of Chicago and stopping gang violence. Yeah, yeah, you need somebody else to do something because y'all clearly can't. You clearly can't fix it on your own. You clearly can't police yourselves. You clearly can't raise your own families very well if we're talking about I mean, I'm sure there are many people that are able to raise their families well in Chicago, but I'm saying the motherfuckers, that's the problem. You can't do it. So somebody else needs to intervene because you can't do it for yourself. Like if you pay attention to a lot of the criticisms that you're going to hear that you may have heard on last video and what you're going to see in, in the rest of this, it's pretty much uh, black folks saying, uh, let us just do whatever we want to do and you don't say nothing about it. Let us be as destructive as we want to be, as dangerous as we want to be, to where it's unsafe for anybody to be around us. Just don't say anything about it. But this is the information age. Everybody can talk. Everybody has information. You don't, you're not privy or you, it's not like you're going to be the only one privy to a particular piece of information. If somebody else wants to know what you know, they can learn it too. So it almost seems like niggas are low key embarrassed because now this documentary's out. Now you embarrassed now. You should have been embarrassed before the documentary. Someone like me regurgitated information that's already been reported in Chicago sometimes 10 years ago. But at the same time, I can, I can totally understand it. it the, the, the one thing I can uh, walk down on, on what you're suggesting, is that I can understand why it would definitely hurt people's feelings if somebody that they lost many years ago in a gang conflict is being mentioned again, that maybe they've forgotten. It's maybe opening that old wound. So I can understand why that might hurt somebody's feelings. But at the same time, this is all derived from a guy, King Von, who was on songs talking about he killed seven people. His own words in his own songs. And I've honestly, I found it really, really surprising how many people have kind of like come out to try and defend this seemingly serial killer who killed at least seven people by his own lyrics. And no one spares a thought to the young black men and women that this guy allegedly killed. They don't matter. Nobody cares 
about none of that. Like as far as the black community, and this is this is in a lot of our communities, dude. The black community, the only thing that really exists in the black community are single mothers with a bunch of kids by a bunch of different men, men who are selling dope or gangbanging or in and out of jail. The men who go to work and come home, which most of the community is men and women who are working, who are hardworking, tax-paying, law-abiding citizens, man. But they don't have no voice. There's no voice for them. There's no voice. Everything is criminal reform and single moms. And here, let me fix it and make sure you have access to get as many abortions as you want. You know what I mean? Um, the other people that are working hard and the woman who ain't got no kids, the, the man who ain't doing no crimes, don't nobody care about you, dog. Don't nobody care about you, nigga. You better go break a law. Break a law first. Nigga. Now, nobody wants to spare a thought to the families of the people who Vaughn allegedly took away. You know, I've got in my video, you've got the relative. Once Vaughn dies, you've got the relatives of the people that he killed celebrate. And it's it's kind of a case of like, it, it does kind of like, it, it's kind of crazy to me that so many people are coming out trying to defend Vaughn when, you know, the reality is, this is the guy that was killing people. If people are sliding, it's because this guy killed one of their friends. It's not because me or the news or academics are talking about it. And that's the way I see it. Maybe not everyone agrees, but that's my perspective. So, I mean, Make it. They, so he's making some good points. Making, knowing good guys have points, they're like, he don't know. He's just not aware of clout. It's the biggest drug in the world right now. Besides everyone. These people are literally watching your videos like yours or watching CNN News or watching Fox 32 of murder. Go on home and watch the news to see they work being displayed. Just know there's somebody right now thinking, I want to be on that trap cross video. Let's go go out, do these murders, talk about it in some songs and hope that they can get your attention. They're craving this. And you can't tell me that you don't know people is craving this, man. As intelligent as you seem, and I know you are highly intelligent. I can tell. I definitely tell about your work, that documentary. So I know you got to know that it's, you're creating, you're helping create other many means. We can't say Vaughn was a serial killer. He was never convicted of not one murder. Not one murder. Even when they thought that they had him for a murder, what happened? Beat the cases, right? Yeah, he beat the cases because the witnesses ironically ended up dead. Hmm. And this is what we this is what we'll commonly do. We will commonly do this right here. Defend the indefensible. Defend evil. Defend the very thing that harms us, the very thing that destroys us, the very thing that that is that's going to fuck up future generations of young black people. We will sit here and defend Black men who are supposed to be strong, who are supposed to stand on a square and we, this is what it's going to be, will defend the very same thing that is destroying the community, destroying your sons, destroying your daughters. You will sit up here and argue for it. Argue for it. We will argue for it. Passionately. And then you wonder why shit don't change. Because you're steadily defending the thing that is fucking you up. It's a damn shame. And this is this is why this is why I pretty much just say this is black. This black male cowardice. Okay? If this is how you talking, you talking like a coward. Right? Straight up. Because you know better. You know better, nigga. All the gangbangers you know. You know better. And if he's if he from there, he probably affiliated with GDBD. He's affiliated with something more than likely. Let me not put that on that man. I would say more than likely. That means he didn't do it. And I'm not on here like just taking. Uh, that doesn't mean he didn't do it. Okay. Because a, because a witness died. 
and they, and they didn't have enough evidence, that means he's not guilty. That doesn't mean he's innocent. Niggas don't even know the law. That means he's not guilty. It's not the same as innocent. Well, I'm sad. No, I'm just speaking <clears> that. He was never convicted of not one murder, even though he rapped about it. You because the witnesses die, nigga. People that be around the future do not pop fucking pills. People just put things that, that sound good to people. Okay, so he was I'm MC Gusto. Is, 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 is this what you're trying to do to him in his death? He's MC Gusto. That's what he was. He was a CB4 type nigga. He really wasn't doing none of that shit he was rapping about. He really wasn't about that. That's what you're saying. See, this type of shit, see, this is the thing. When you defend the same bullshit that's harming you, you look like this. You look goofy. You look you look like a goofy, bozo-ass nigga. Look at Van Face. I'm about to stop you there in the future like to get high. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> now look, the, the only way you know that is if you was there with him and you can get with him or something. I, I wasn't with him, so I can't say that. But I just know that these stories, it be bigger. And I understand, like, the KO behind it. And I know that you don't want to have no ownership uh, knowing that you're linked to a possible murder. Because... Just know you your story gonna be linked to it. And just know this is something that you just gotta deal with and live with. Don't nobody give a fuck. Y'all y'all are stepping over. Listen, man, y'all over there dissing the dead and stepping over dead bodies when you open your door out there. Y'all got children walking around with PTSD, you know what I mean? Because it's like they live in the Gaza Strip or some shit. And you say, oh, you're going to be responsible for this. Nigga, you can't. You know what I mean? That's that's always, that's what I'm trying to say, man. Like, black folk, our community is matriarchal to the fucking core. When you don't have facts, when you don't have evidence, when you don't have reason, the very last man, shame. You're going to try your best to, you're, you try your best to guilt trip somebody. Make an emotional appeal for your motherfucking argument since you ain't got no real evidence. They should have let somebody else come up here and talk in King Dave's space. Real shit. Because he, he, he's done no favors for King Von and death. Okay, he's done no favors in this argument. He's done no favors in this discussion whatsoever. You've made shit worse. <laughs> You've made shit worse and you make, you make everybody look crazy. Real shit. And it's okay to have ownership. You know what I'm saying? No, no, no. Where's your ownership, nigga? These is your homies. These are your peoples. Where's your ownership? I'm trying to put yourself to the side because really it, it just it looks like a culture culture. Like every time it's going on in Chicago, because I guess we like the biggest when it comes to this in America. So that's why everybody gravitates to Chicago because it's a gangster city. You know what I'm saying? But it's always somebody just coming in, getting rich off of this and all we doing is dying and going to criminals. And all we in is, no, I'm not in it for the money. I love Vaughn. Well, well, at, well at any point, you, you, can, you can stop uh, dying and going to prison. Like, at any point, you can, like, stop murdering each other and going to prison. Like, at any point, you can stop doing that. It's not, like, written in a rule book that that's what you got to do. I heard you say you love Vaughn music, but when you was on an interview with Adam 22, and he told you something about carry a poker just like look him if you was really a Von fan i didn't hear you stand up to Von at that moment so i paid attention to that video you remember that on the adam 22 video that was deep to me it was because if you was really a Von fan you would have got offended by that comment right yeah it, not in, in my defense on that comment i didn't really catch that at the time he kind of said it but at the same time i'll be honest like I don't disagree with a lot of what you just said, actually. I actually I'll say before I let that play, uh, why should he be offended? He ain't no king, but he liked his music. You know what I mean? I like Tupac music. I like Biggie's music. Okay, if you know what I'm saying, if if if, if somebody ra is rapping hit 'em up lyrics, I don't get mad at him because I like Biggie. 
It ain't that deep. You know what I mean? He didn't know Vaughn. He liked his music. He didn't know him. They agree with a lot of what you just said. I think we are actually right now, we're in an era of crazy internet clout where you were right. I think that, I think people are killing and crashing out and committing murders for clout on the internet. I, I, I'm not disagreeing with you. There, there may be someone out there who does feel like I'm going to catch a body and it's going to be in a Trap Lord Ross video and that's going to get put me on. But what I would say is that I think that, that to blame me for that is unfair because I think we're, that's part of a much wider conversation. Whereas I think clout, mainly due to social media, I think you've got guys like, for instance, this BTB Savage situation, which I didn't cover, I don't know that much about, but you've got a situation where a guy, you know, a self-defense killing, he's putting it on social media, he's getting all of this attention, capitalizing off of it to get attention on social media, and then he ends up, unfortunately, losing his life as a direct result of this. I don't think many people are blaming the social media platforms. You know, no one's saying, you're kind of saying like Trap Law Ross is in the wrong because he's creating this atmosphere of people doing crimes to get clout. But nobody says, hey, we need to ban Instagram from allowing these gang members to have a platform. And these, these social media accounts, these social media platforms, they are a big part of this situation. They're stoking all of this, like all of this stuff that's going on. They're giving a voice to it. But ultimately, at the end of the day, I think Instagram whether it's Chicago sometimes, um, my channel, they're all part of a much bigger problem, which I think is just the fact that we've got a society where people are being allowed to fall through the cracks. And, you know, you've got situations where people are having these gang conflicts and they're just putting it out there for the whole world to see and nobody's stopping it. I mean, like, these guys killing each other, it shouldn't even get to Instagram, whether it's the cops shutting it down and prevent, having some sort of intervention to stop these conflicts getting to this level, or just not letting the city become such a, such a fucking nightmare where people are shooting out in broad daylight. I think it's like, once again, it's just like, it, it is all playing out on social media, but it's not Mark Zuckerberg's fault, you know what I mean? I'm reporting on this stuff because, let's be real, you said it yourself, Chicago Drill is number one when it comes to hip-hop music. Like, Chicago, the drill wave, you, your city is the hottest topic when it comes to music. And part of that is because the music is amazing. Part of that is also because the stories and the violence behind it is so raw. And again, it's not, you know, it's, it's the same thing of like, you want to blame the record labels. Like King Von, let's be real, was one of the biggest clap chasers when it came to hopping on songs and talking about, I've murdered so many people. And no one ever really levels the same thing as a record label. Nobody ever says, hey, Empire Music, you shouldn't platform this stuff. Somebody might slide and bear in mind, You've got me doing a documentary about, you know, the, maybe the nuance behind some of these stories. But then you've got Empire Distribution putting out a song by King Von where he's saying, my shorties are catching bodies for me. And the body is a guy that got killed the week before. That's definitely going to stoke violence. Or like, for example, the other option is like FBG Duck when he made that song Dead Bitches. And he's talking about he's smoking on this person, that person, this person that have all been killed in this gang war. Very rarely do you see people stand up and say, you know what, maybe Duck's music contributed to, to what happened. Maybe Von saying that all of these different people got smoked. Tuka, people saying they've been smoking Tuka for the last 15 years in the rap game. And it's like nobody ever says, Chief, like, let's, let's stop listening to Chief Keef or let's take down Chief Keef's music. It's kind of like, it's a much bigger part. It's like my channel, the social media, the music. I think it's all a much bigger part of like a much wider situation that's going on in society that ultimately like me taking down a video or academics saying that he's not doing war in Chirac, I don't think these things will solve the problem. You know what I mean? But I actually agree with you that I think we're in this fucked up cloud era where violence is essentially being rewarded by clout and attention. If you come out and you're the new rapper and you say you've got three bodies, even the baby, when he came out and it was like he had the self defense shooting, that blew him up. And that's actually a fucked up state that society and media is in. But I just don't think it's my fault. I think, I think I'm at the bottom of the pile talking about this crazy shit that's going on. So I don't think it's my fault. I'm not, I'm not putting everything on you. I'm not. I'm just telling you that you are a leaf on the actual tree. That's all. A leaf on the actual tree. And there's your problem. And that's almost poetic, man. The leaf on the actual tree. But are you addressing the root? You're worried about the leaf on the actual tree, 
but you're not addressing the root. Because if Academics never did a Chirac, if Trap Lord Ross never did a rap video or a rap documentary about all these guys, because this ain't the only one he's done, he's done different places, you know what I mean? So Chicago's unique in a sense, but it's really not all that unique because the Bronx got their gang war and all these other different places got gang wars. There's shootings everywhere. It's black folks dying, black folks, black boys, especially black men, especially, are the number one thing that's dying in every city if you got a documentary or not so if they never did a documentary those people would still be dying so it's like you're worried about the wrong thing you know what i mean you're trying to you, you know what i mean you're worried about the carpet the house is on fire right so this is part two i'm gonna do a part three i don't know probably a little bit later uh, let me know what you guys think. If you agree, you disagree, whatever, man. You can say whatever you want over here. The rules are talk like you got some sense and be nice. All praise due to the almighty algorithm. Like, share, subscribe. Y'all have a good one. Peace.